well. Ready? Ready. Okay. All right, we all would like to welcome everybody to Santa Clara City Council tonight. Um, appreciate everybody being here. Looks like we got a full crowd in the audience. Um, we've got present from the council tonight, Councilman Wimber Gubler, Councilman Denny Drake, Councilman Jarrett Waite, and Councilwoman Lena Mathis. Um, Councilman Shakespeare texted me a few minutes ago and said he was in meetings with attorneys and he was going to be late. So we'll excuse him. And um, we do have an opening ceremony plan with Pledge of Allegiance and opening comments. I'll go ahead and fill in for Councilman Shakespeare on that. Would everyone please rise and salute the flag? Our Father in heaven, Father, we're grateful for the opportunity we have to meet together tonight as a city council and staff and, and the public and accomplish some of the business that is before us. We ask that thou would have thy spirit with us so we can consider what is best for the city as we do our deliberations tonight, that we'd be able to do um, things in good with our conscience. Father, we ask a special blessing to be upon um, this city and this state and this country as we go through some trying times right now with COVID. We'd ask that that would please bless all of those that are that are suffering from COVID, that they would be able to get the assistance that they need. That, that would help us um, as we negotiate the pandemic. Father, we ask a blessing to be upon our leaders and the nation as they go through some trying times right now. Please bless our law enforcement and our military that they would be watched over and kept safe. Father, we're grateful for all the opportunities that bestows upon this great city. We'd ask that that was please bless us with moisture as we sorely need it going into our summer season. We're grateful for all that was given us and say these things humbly in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Welcome, Matt. Communications and appearances. Um, anybody here to address the council on anything that's not on the agenda? I haven't got any forms, Brock? None. Okay, we'll go ahead and move to conflicts and disclosures. Counselor, is there any item on the agenda tonight that you may have a conflict of interest in that you would like to disclose now? Mine's not a conflict per se, but since we're going to talk about the bond, I will disclose that I work for Zion Bank. Thank you. So noted. Any others? Okay, we'll go down into the working agenda. We do have two public hearings tonight. The first public hearing is to receive public input regarding Santa Clara City hydrant meters, the rental fee change. Um, Council, this is something that we reviewed in the um, work meeting, and uh, there is an item in the packet. Since there's no residents here, I won't ask for a lengthy explanation. Um, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing and ask anyone who's come to speak on this item, give them the opportunity. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. While we're in the mood, we'll go ahead and open the second public hearing for the LID fee. This is also something that we talked about, I think extensively in the in the work meeting, it's a fee to do the low impact development um, reviews, and that's just a pass through fee that'll go from the, the city engineer charges directly to the developer. Um, is there uh, anyone who has come to speak on this item tonight? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close that public hearing and go back to the agenda. Um, item 5B is a consent agenda. On the consent agenda tonight, you have the approval of the claims and minutes. Um, the minutes from the December 16th, 2020 special city council meeting. The minutes from the January 6th, 2021 city council work meeting. And the claims through January 13th, 2020. 
on the calendar of events. You can review that. Um, city offices will be closed on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. We have a regular meeting on the 27th work meeting on February 3rd and regular meetings on February 10th and 24th scheduled. Also, we need to set a public hearing to receive public input on amending the operating and capital budget for fiscal year 2020-2021 for January 27th, 2021, starting at 5 p.m. Council, do you wanna address all of these items with one motion or address them separately? Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Got a motion by Jarrett and a second by Lena to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any question or discussion on that motion? There is money item in there, roll call. Um, Wendell? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you, Council. And we don't have anybody Zooming or anything I should ask earlier. Uh, not on any of those items. We do have Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rose here to discuss on the uh, on the gate. Native community. Okay. All right. Item 5C, general business. Number one, consider amending the Santa Clara City Hydrant Meters Rental Fee and approve resolution 2021-01R. This is uh, raising the staff would like to raise the meter fee from or the deposit from 800 to 1500 and change the daily rate from 250 to $5 per day. Um, also implementing a fee for non-compliance, bringing the meter for meter readings. First offense is $50, second offense is $200, and third offense is $500. Any question on that request or the resolution, Council? If not, I would look for a motion. I would move to approve the uh, hydrant meters rental fee and approve resolution 2021-01R. Second. Got a motion by Denny and a second by Wendell to approve the hydrant meter fee changes and the resolution is presented. Is there any question on that motion? Seeing none, this is a money item. Roll call, Lena. Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. I love the pace of this meeting. <laughs> okay. Okay, number two, consider amending the low impact development LID fee and approve resolution 2021-02R. Uh, this is the low impact development fee as we previously discussed. Um, anybody got any questions on that? Questions for the staff? If not, I'd look for a motion. I would move to approve the low impact fee development fee and approved resolution 2021-02R. I'll second. A motion by Denny and a second by Jarrett to approve the uh, development fee schedule and add the low impact development fee to the schedule to cover engineering review fees um, for development um, and approve resolution 2021-02R. Any question on that motion? Again, this is a money item, Wendell. Aye. Any? Aye. Garrett? Aye. Leave it? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Council. Item number three is the um, award the bid for the South Hills water line improvements. Uh, I think those bids were received yesterday. Jack? Yes. Uh, we uh, had the bid opening yesterday. We had seven bidders. Um, one bid was thrown out because they forgot their bid bond. And so we only ended up with six bidders and luckily uh, the person that didn't have his bid bond uh, was high. So he wasn't the lowest bidder. So that worked out good. Um, the engineer estimate for the project was a million, um, 1,297,000. Uh, progressive contracting, contracting uh, uh, company gave us a bid of 1,293,000. Uh, $1,575.12, which uh, was uh, just, what was it, $3,425 lower than the engineer's estimate. And so um, if 
you, I don't know if you want any more information than that, but uh, staff would recommend that we approve, award the bid to uh, progressive contracting and, and uh, move forward with the waterline project. Council, there's the bid tabulations are in your packet. Um, this is a budgeted item. It's in the budget to complete, right, Jack? It's, 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 uh, you better answer that by Brock and no. No, it's not in, in the budget currently, but it will, we'll put it in for the, it's an impact fee eligible item. So we will amend and put it into the, the budget. But it was part of the amended discussion. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, at that time, no, we, in the water fund, all we had uh, in for the amendment is for a dump truck. So there's funds in the, Impact fund to cover the cost yes. of this project. Mm -hmm. So you'll just go through the budget amendment process before the end of the fiscal year to move yep. that money into it. Yep. Right. Copies of the plans and stuff in there, Council. Any questions for Jack or the staff? How did the other bids compare? Were they all pretty close? Uh, the next closest bidder was a hundred thousand dollars higher, just a little over a hundred thousand. Um, and then uh, the third bidder was about 141. Uh, I think the fifth, the fourth, let's see, the fourth bidder was 429,000. Well, they just kept getting higher or difference. But uh, we know PCI, they've done a good job. They've done work in our city before. They're a good contractor and we feel comfortable with them. Engineer feels good, good about them. Yeah, they're, they're a little hungry right now. They've, they've done some work in the, in the city for us uh, back with uh, 2010 floods. Well, the good thing is they're all reasonable. It doesn't look like we're out of line. No. Just good. So I have a question related, but a little unrelated. I went back and looked at our water impact fee and saw that most of the items on here were included in our water impact fee. But on the water impact fee, it had a, a tank listed. Just for my reference going forward, are we putting in an additional tank as well? Um, yeah, we, in our design, if we get more growth in the South Hills, we have a tank that would be actually go just above the park area that, that is designated um, up above the water tank. And uh, that's where we would put the next tank for storage. Jack, is that tank needed for the area south of the park? The most of it, or is it needed? South or east? Well, you mean over the hill? Sure, east, but yeah, I'm thinking on over the hill on the back side. If, that's if, the reason for that. Yes, if we go over the hill, that's, that's when we're going to need it. Okay. If we never go over the hill, then we wouldn't need that tank? Probably not. So the existing tank would be sufficient to have to, for everything that's going in on the east? I think so. We'd, we'd have to review that with the engineers again just to make sure. Okay. Um, right now that tank fills from the bottom up like a bathtub because the tanks up in Snow Canyon are actually higher than this tank. And so it flows uphill and just fills. But when we have high demand usage, the water doesn't make it up into the tank as quickly as it should. and so. Um, eventually we're going to have to put booster pumps to pump it and fill the tank. And then we've got another booster station there that we're going to use to boost the water up to the park, but also we would boost it up to the next tank so that we have storage to help us out with that for high, high peak demands. We still might need it for just high peak demand and storage, even if we don't grow in the South Hills. The second tank. Yes. Question. Any other questions, Council? There are none. I would look for a motion. Mayor, I make a motion that we award the bid for the South Hills Waterline to, progress, to progressive contracting as presented. Second. A motion by Jarrett and a second by Lena to award the bid for the South Hills Water Improvement Project to progressive contracting as presented. Any question on that? Do you want a dollar amount? In Let's put the dollar amount in it. Okay. Um, and I'll amend my motion to include that the bid is going to progressive contracting 
in the amount of one million two hundred ninety-three thousand five hundred seventy-five and twelve cents. Thank you, Lena. <clears throat> Second. Okay. Any question on the amended motion? Here's a money item. Roll call, Lena. Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Ben still not here. Okay. Thank you, Council. We'll go to item four: is consider approval of the. <clears throat> First amended interlocal agreement supporting the renewed Mojave Desert Tortoise incidental take permit issued to Washington County. This is a copy of it's in your packet council. This is the renewal um, of the, the take permit that's required for the HCP operation. Um, you can kind of read through that, but it basically provides um, for the fee collection of the fees to maintain the HCP that allows the, the private properties to continue to be developed under the current program. This is something that um, they've been working on for a number of years to get it back in place. I think this is, uh, let's see, a 20 year, mm -hmm. 25. 25, mm -hmm. 25 year extension. So that'd be good. That'll put in the end any home. Um, <laughs> have to read it again. But uh, it's important that we do this. Uh, uh, this is going around to all the communities uh, within the county that are impacted by it. And um, we're supporting the county with that. So any questions? Did the fee change at all? The fee, the way they collect the fee does change. The way I understand it is that they're not going to um, collect the, the development time anymore. It's just going to be that collected the building permit right now when you file a final plat you collect a fee per lot at the time of platting and then when you take out a building permit there's another fee collected um, from the builder whoever takes out that pre those fees are combined and, and operate this, the HCP what what they've told us is that they can probably eliminate the development fee and just continue to collect a building permit and have enough funds to be able to keep it in operation and so it's on, it's item, it's on page two of the agreement right at the top, it's item AI, um, it's two tenths of 1% of the estimated construction cost of the work to be performed under the permit. So that'll affect, at some point in time, the effect when it's effective, we won't have to collect those fees at the platting anymore, we're off and, and working. Just pay attention to that date so that we don't, don't overcharge the developers. Most of the communities have approved it. Um, so we'll just be going along with them. So do you know, I, I was really unfamiliar with this, so I went and read not all of, but a portion of that HCP. <laughs> it's really long. Yeah. Um, and Denny might be able to answer my question, but there's this reserve zone six that's in there. Mm -hmm which is, is any of that actually get up to our city or does it really only go as far as the, the northernest part of St. George? Well, zone six is actually over by Leeds, but they're including some more zone six. And I, I'm not exactly sure how they determine where it's going to be. It's, it's on the west side. It's yeah, I looked the at the map. St. George boundary yeah. it goes out to the west. Um, it comes north of the St. George boundary and um, it does impact some of the properties in Santa Clara. Um, the exact extent is, I've been told two different things. Okay. And so I don't know if I can answer it exactly, but it does impact areas within Santa Clara City. And, and that mm -hmm. six. Zone four, and both the relocation of take areas where they move tortoises and they'll relocate them into these areas, which makes it happen. Yeah. And it under, the way I was reading it, it sounded like part of the zone six that may affect us is because of the trade with the northern corridor and taking part of the corridor out. And it, and it made it sound like we could lose some of the trails maybe out in our South Hills. Is you that a possibility? I don't know that you would lose the trails, um, but 
Yeah, the trail can stay. It's there's trails within the HCP everywhere. Okay. There's no attempt to close any of the existing primitive trails. Where I see it potentially having a major impact is on possibly construction of the western corridor um, and some potential expansion, including the shooting range. We could see some mm -hmm. some impact to those areas. Um, then he's received some communication from the BLM that's kind of indicating that we're. Okay. And I'm seeing it with some projects we're working on with St. George, where they were planning on doing some water development um, west of the Barrio project, and that's being shut down. So, mm -hmm. okay. so yeah, there's going to be some impacts relative to the South Hills. Denny and I were talking before the meeting about getting together with Keith Rick Trip over to the BLM and try and nail down what exactly those impacts are, so we can bring that back to council and you can make decisions on. What are we going to do with the BLM portion of the South Hills going forward now? Thank you. Any other questions, Council? If there's not, I would look for a motion. I would move that we approve the Mojave Desert Tortoise uh, interlocal agreement as presented. Second. Got a motion and a second um, to approve the first amended interlocal agreement supporting renewed Mojave Desert Tortoise incidental take permit issued to Washington County as presented. Any question on that motion, Council? Um, I don't see it as a money item, but let's do roll call anyway. Um, Wendell? Aye. Benny? Aye. Garrett? Aye. Lena? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Council. Number five, consider approval of an interlocal agreement with tourism money and resolution 2021 04R. Bradley? Um, we've, we've talked about this previously in City Council meetings. This was a a request that uh, Santa Clara City went to the tourism board to request help to construct the parking lots along Canyon View Drive and, and Little League Park. Uh, they gave us uh, partial funding of what we asked for, but I think we did pretty well on the request. So the, what they're doing is uh, what we've done is phase the project to try to do the two upper parking lots along Canyon View and as much as we can do down at Little League, not including the Little League parking lot with the funds that we have available. Um, so the agreement uh, will provide the city $160,000 in matching funds to do the project and the $160,000 from the city, something that has changed different this time than the time we had before was that they had wanted us to do a hard match on the uh, money that they gave us. And that, that was different than last, the last time we requested the money. We do have the money in wrap tax to do the hard match as of October Third, we had $155,000 in the parks part of that, and we've got a couple of months coming in. So we, we have the funding to go ahead with the project. Right now, uh, Jared is uh, Jared from Rosenberg and Associates is working on the design, and we'll get some in engineering estimates with that, and we'll have a better idea where we're at with the money that we have to do, that we have to work with. So it, it's moving along, and you know, I hope we can use some in-house uh, labor to, to get some of that done and save us some money, but are there any questions? I just have one question, nothing. Yes. On the parking lot itself, the diesels that are parked in there, what is going to happen once we pave that parking lot? We currently have it posted for no overnight parking, but they continue to park in there. We could actually at this point to have them, have them removed you know, if it becomes a problem, but I don't. The weight of those is going to wreck havoc on your parking lot if you continue to uh, yeah, we, allow we, them once it's paved. Yeah, my understanding is, and maybe Reed can answer this, but if we, we can enforce the no parking there or overnight parking and we can have the people move those vehicles away if it's, a, if it's an issue. And I think once we get it paved and to avoid those issues, we'll have a conversation with public safety to make sure that's in is enforced right the other thing we can do as part of the design the location of the tree islands and those types of things 
and I would discourage the easy flow through that's available right now in well, Berkeley. So I mean, it hasn't been an issue in the past, but if we pave that, it should be a real big deal. Yeah, it really will. Yeah, Jack was just telling me that the asphalt isn't thick enough to support those heavier vehicles in there. Where exactly is this out again, Mr. Mayor? Canyon View Park. Canyon View Park. By the yeah, state park. Um, I think what we would do is we would probably instruct our officers about that problem and then let them know to probably start issuing parking tickets unless we have an absolute that we can't have there to cause damage and just let them know that we would probably have to just set up a tow service to come out and move the vehicles. And we could always do like a parking citation and work out an agreement with a tow company where they do like a relocate and just move it somewhere else so they don't have quite the impound fees, but there may be a cost for the city for relocation on something like that. But that would be something that you may want to discuss. So. Is, are these locals? Are they residents that drive the big trucks and they just park there on the weekends and stuff? Is that where the use is? I know one of the gentlemen I talked to, he did live in Santa Clara, but he's since relocated to Ivan's, but he still likes to use our parking here. The other, I, the other person I don't know. They're probably using it because it's convenient right now. It's going to get less convenient when they have to negotiate the parking lot. But they, now they've lost two places with the development of the Sitla property on Lava Flow Drive. They used to park there once in a while. That's opportunity's gone. I don't know if it's something we need to talk about finding a place for residents. If it was a large demand on the resident side, we could maybe try and identify one, but I think we'll just start the enforcement once that project starts. Even bringing in towing vehicles onto that asphalt to tow a diesel away would be excessive for the asphalt that you're going to put down. So hopefully we can just get them to move. If we know who the individuals are, I think it would be nice where we've allowed them to do that to this point, to give them a warning and just say, hey, we're going to be paving this. You're going to need to find a new place to park rather than just citing them up front. Yeah, occasionally I do see them there, you know, during the day getting ready to go head out and I could stop and just talk to them. And them know. I'm sure they'd appreciate that rather than a citation. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Bradley. And it has, I believe it is, and it's posted, it's been posted for a while that there is no, no parking. So I think they are aware. They it would just, I just think it would be nice continue. to do that. <laughs> just a nice move on the city. Uh -huh. Any other questions, guys? What is that? I've never been so excited for a parking lot. It's going to be super nice for our citizens. Okay, if there's no other questions, I would ask council for a motion. I'll make that motion. I move that we approve the interlocal agreement for tourism money and resolution 2020-04R as presented. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve the interlocal or motion by Jarrett and a second by Lena to approve the interlocal agreement for tourism money and resolution 2021-04R. Any question on that motion council? There's a money item, roll call, Lena. Aye. Jarrett. Aye. Benny? Aye. Wendell? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Council. Number six, consider approval of Ordinance 202101, establishing conditions of approval of, of exceptions to the general prohibition on private gated communities, plan development districts, Title 17, Chapter 17.68.40, presented by Mr. Ants. Yes, uh, Council. Um, we discussed this in the work meeting last week. Um, the, the proposed ordinance um, has, has not changed except for the one item that I mentioned at the end of our discussion last week. I made a change to um, section G, I think it's 3G, uh, 2G, sorry, section 2G. I changed the language there regarding the lien and the, and the foreclosure of that lien uh, just to strengthen that a little bit. But otherwise, I haven't made any changes since our discussion last week. Um, I think all of you probably recall that this, this, is, um, this proposed ordinance is, is an attempt to um, allow a, a fairly narrow uh, type of development to go forward with, the, uh, with gates and, and private streets. 
um, consistent with the Regal Homes development that uh, that's being proposed. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions. And um, Mayor, I know that uh, Dade is also uh, joined us for the meeting and uh, he may have some comments as well if you uh, if you're interested in hearing from him. Okay, thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. The Planning Commission recommends approval of the proposed code amendment, um, noting it, it was restrictive in terms of allowing gated communities and very few are likely to meet the criteria for allowing these communities. Um, Council, I know that uh, we discussed this at the work meeting and um, I go ahead and, and go to you guys for additional comments or if you had any questions for Mr. Rose who supports the amendment. comments? I guess I can kick it off. Um, I've really wrestled with this um, quite a bit and I've made quite a few phone calls, talked to a lot of people about it. And to be honest, I got overwhelming responses that we should not have gated communities in Santa Clara. Um, some of that came up in our work meeting, but most of the comments I received were, it creates a separation of our community. Um, the whole, you can drive in front of my house, but I can't drive in front of yours. There were other comments, like I've lived in a gated community and we had a lot of issues inside the community that had nothing to do with the gate being there or not. Um, and then one other comment that I heard quite a bit was having this much land under one landlord was kind of concerning, but there's being so little land left in the city to give up this much to just one entity, not knowing how that'll be run in the future, regardless of who's developing it or who's running it right now. Um, so I just wanted to share that, that I probably called about 15 folks and spoke to another 10 or 20. And I, I got one person that was said, well, it, that'd probably be okay if we did that, but everyone else did not like the idea. Anybody else, council? Comments? Before we ask for a motion, and I'll give Data a chance to comment before the motion. I know that We've ha I've had the same comments that, that Jared has had um, concerning uh, creating a, an atmosphere of separation and that the reason it was not initially in any of our ordinances was because of that. And so I've had a lot of, not a lot, four or five negative responses to that also. Anybody else like to speak? Dade, anything to add before council goes to a motion? Well, thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to just make a couple of brief comments and thankful for the receiving the invitation uh, to this meeting. If I may, um, if it's possible, if I could just share my screen and then I can just show you sort of where the gates are that we're talking about. And uh, I think that may help people to understand a little bit better how this project's supposed to work. So tell me um, if you're able to see my screen. Yes, we can see it. Oh, okay, so, so this, is our, this is our project and it's on um, 16 acres. 16 and a half acres, just off of the future Red Mountain Drive. And it's part of the, the greater Black Desert um, project as well. And so we are in the process of acquiring these areas seven and eight from Patrick Manning. And uh, we, we intend to go forward with this project, gates or no gates, but we feel strongly that the benefit of having a gate in this situation it is important for uh, people that are renting these homes that they will be living in. And, and these are the homes. You can see these homes along here. And we have a 199, we'll have uh, 400 parking spaces throughout the community if you're able to follow my cursor. The main entry comes in off of Red Mountain. And then here is the rec center. And there's a great big resort style swimming pool 
um, and then uh, an office, property manager's office, and a rec facility here. So if someone's driving in to the community, I don't want you to think that they, they can't get in. It's, it's impossible. That's not the case. They would pull in off of Red Mountain. And you can see these parking spaces for guests as they show up. And then the guests would walk in and go in and meet with the property manager if they wanted to rent a home or if they wanted to meet some people. That, that's where they are. The, the gates themselves that are an issue is a gate here, if you can see my cursor, and another gate here. Hey, Dade, can you zoom in on that? It's, it's just hard for council to see. We're far enough away from the screen. Let me pull it up better. There you go. That's better. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So you can see that someone driving in, if they were to pull into our community, and let's say that they said, oh, this isn't where I intended to go. It's very easy to turn around and get out. Um, there's, there's an in and then there's an out drive. And then we have these visitor parking spaces here all along the frontage where you'll get to see this beautiful rec center, uh, resort style swimming pool, and we'll have a hot tub and we have pocket parks throughout the community. So on this is uh, where people will access. This is the private drive that we have. We've just built our private drive to uh, city specifications so that they're very, they're wide and they're comfortable um, for access. So there's, there's no problems with that. And there's an emergency access out here for secondary. This is the road that's being put in in connection with the Sullivan project that was just recently approved. So, you know, to our, to our thinking, this is really not that different than what Sullivan has done and, and other developers have done in the neighborhood. Um, the, the benefit here is that almost all of these homes will be rented out for long periods of time. Uh, we aren't looking for, this is not a, a nightly rental community. Uh, we're going to have six to 12 to 18 month residents living in these good sized homes. They're two and one bedroom homes and uh, they're, they're starter homes for a, a boomer or, or someone who's a millennial or somebody who's had, you know, a displacement in life, maybe a divorce or maybe uh, someone who's retired and they just can't afford a house, but they want to live in the community. So we think it really provides an answer to that, that need. And then just like if, you know, as we discussed the other day, if, if you, if these people, if we took these homes and then said, okay, let's, let's build an apartment building and we just stacked these homes one on top of each other, um, you know, if, do you really want to have someone being able to walk down your hallway in an apartment? You know, most apartment projects, you have to get in and there's security access, to get in and access them. And so, you know, that's what's happening here. These are just individual homes. They aren't, you know, they aren't adjoined and people can, you know, walk up and they walk into their, their little home and it's, it's, it's private, but it, it, it works. And so the gates, as I mentioned, it, it's, we, we fully intend to go forward with this project, but, and I know that's not in front of us today, but I want to make that clear, but the gates just make it nicer and it makes it better for the community. We don't think that we're preventing anyone from you know, coming in and, and being able to visit with friends and family. And as I said, anyone can pull in up through this area where I'm circling and they can park, they can come up and visit. And uh, we, we think it works well. Uh, we do have a, a wall on the perimeter as uh, was requested originally in our meetings with the city. And so, that, that, that's really it. I, I, I hope that makes sense. I, I understand sometimes people hear, oh, there's a new project going in and, you know, we, boy, we don't want to have one person just, just operating this, but think of, think of the, the tens of millions of dollars that we've got invested in this. None of these people are forced to stay. They don't have, they don't own their homes. If, if we don't take care of these roads, if we don't take care of these gates, and this community, they'll, they'll just leave and we'll be stuck holding the bill. And so it, it's not that anyone is going, any of our residents will, 
be losing a big investment of money. The only one who really stands to lose is us. And so that puts the onus on us to really take care of this and make it nice and make it welcoming. So I hope that, that you'll consider it and, uh, and not look at this as, you know, somehow it's not a property right that we want to allow. I mean, you know, we, we believe strongly in property rights in this country. And, and if this doesn't work, then, you know, that's, that's going to be our loss. But, but this is the way great things also happen in this country where people are willing to risk their money to, to build something that's going to be a benefit to the community. I hope you'll view it that way and feel okay about uh, allowing us to put in these gates. If you have any questions, I'm happy to respond. I can pan back out or move the cursor up or down wherever you'd like me to go. Thank you again for listening to me tonight. Any questions for Dade? Thank you, Dade. We appreciate your perspective and your input on this issue. Thank you. Okay, Council, let me come back to you and see if there's any additional discussion. Uh, Matt's presented an ordinance to you. Um, so the item is considered approval of the ordinance, but can be willing to make a motion. I want to talk about it. I guess I'll just say to Matt, I appreciate the effort that you put in in trying to do something that was um, restrictive, I guess, knowing how we feel about gated communities. Um, I still, like Jared, I still struggle with the idea of a gated community. And I'm taking this project out of the mix because in my view, the project has nothing to do with it. It's, it, it's whether or not we want a gated, gated communities as a whole. And I've looked at this and thought, okay, so, the way we've written it, the one thing I do appreciate it is that even if we approve the ordinance, we don't have to approve a single, technically we don't have to approve a single gated community going forward, even if it meets the ordinance because of how it's written, um, which I appreciate. And then the second part would be, I've thought about, well, what would be the next request we could potentially get? What, what does the ordinance actually allow? And in my mind, we could have somebody come to us and say, I'm gonna put in a compound and I'm gonna build five units and I'm gonna have move this person in and this person in and this person in and I'm gonna gate it all off from you. And that would be allowed under our ordinance. So I'm just looking at all of the potential consequences of that. Um, so there's my thoughts. Anybody else? Okay, then I would look for a motion, Council. I can make that motion, Mayor. Um, so I move that we um, deny the um, ordinance as presented. 2020-01 um, establishing conditions for approval of accepts the general prohibition of private gated communities plan development districts title 17 chapter 17.68.40 yeah do i have a second on that motion i'll second it a motion by jared a second by wendell to uh, deny the ordinance Matt, do we need to state findings? No, no. Nope. All right, any Sufficient. questions on that ordinance? Are there any questions on the motion, excuse me? Yep. I don't know if there's any more, but uh, Councilman Shakespeare has joined us. Sorry, Sorry Mayor. Sneaky, Ben. <laughs> ben, anything you'd like to, any questions that you have relative to the motion <laughs> or the ordinance that was before well, us? Listening to you guys on the radio, you sounded great. Um, no, I do not, and I feel bad I missed this because I, uh, I, I don't know the conversation, so I'll, I'll hold off on this. And we can deny this motion and then open it back up to conversation if, if we want. I'm fine with that. Okay, we do have a motion and a second. There's no other question on the motion. It's roll call vote, Wendell. Aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. 
right now it's 40 to approve denying the ordinance um, as it's written um, is there is there any um, any desire on the council to make any changes within the ordinance is there a, a line or something that could be modified that um, could happen and, and maybe come back with a, another vote or motion everybody pretty well set I believe Lena did a good job of thanking Matt. I think if we were to have the ordinance, I think this would be the kind of ordinance that we would want. I just uh, get a general feeling that uh, gated communities within Santa Clara, uh, a lot of the residents are opposed to that. And I think that's the issue for me. All right, well, anybody else want to comment? Motion has been, or the ordinance has been denied. Um, so we will move on from that point. Again, thank you, Dade, for your input through this, this whole process. Thank you. Mayor, can I just say one thing in response? Absolutely. You, you don't have to worry about my feelings at all. I'm just fine. So uh, <laughs> this is absolutely your prerogative and, and uh, just, we just do our best to address the the needs that you identify so and i appreciate the work you put into the ordinance matt that's no problem okay moving on with the agenda item seven consider approval of ordinance 2021-02 updating the recycle ordinance mr ants yes uh this is also an item that we discussed previously um we found out from the solid waste district that there was an error in one of the in one of the numbers um, so this, um, this new ordinance is solely to modify the ordinance that was already a pass to make that, that one correction. Um, we decided to bring it back as a separate ordinance rather than reconsidering the previous ordinance. Uh, that was the cleanest way to do that. So, um, and I apologize, I don't have it open right in front of me, but if, if I remember correctly, it was just one digit that was off. Yeah. There's a 10 cent increase from the current rate of 445 to 455. Is that it? Yeah. yeah For year was, one of the agreement. Yep. Yeah, it was that. That was the only change. Everything else is staying the same. So. Okay. Council, any questions regarding this ordinance? Something we've already approved. They're just increasing that cost for year one by 10 cents a month. I would move to approve the uh, Washington County Solid Waste District number one billing change. I second it. And ordinance. ordinance. And ordinance, yes. Gotta go back to get it. Your second is okay with that one, Wendell? Yes. Okay, I've got a motion by Danny and a second by Wendell to approve. Um, the ordinance number 2021-02 is presented tonight with the additional fee. Any question on the ordinance, Council? This is an ordinance, money item roll call. Um, Wendell. Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you, Council. Okay, consider approval of Parameters resolution 2021-03, Mr. Jacobson. Yeah, so this, uh, the bond parameters, and we have Mark Anderson from Zion's Bank with us on Zoom tonight. This is the parameter setting forth, uh, the parameters for the resolution. Uh, for the bonding, it sets forth the amount. We cannot uh, borrow more than, it says $4 million. It sets forth the maximum years we can amortize over interest rate maximum and then lays out what uh, bonds we are going to be refunding as the 2012 and 2017 electric bonds as well as issuing roughly 1.2 million in, in new money for purchase of a new generator for the power department okay so that's the packet i think 
council, there's a good description of it. Resolution authorizes issuance and sale of not more than $4 million aggregate principal amount of the bonds. It sets forth the maximum years the bonds can be amortized over 15 years and the maximum interest rate the bonds may carry. The 2012 electric bond has a 451,000 outstanding balance and 2017 has a 1.885 million. We'll be issuing 1.2 million in new money to pay for a new generator. Assuming that generator be located out at the generator house. That's something that um, Jack's brought and discussed with you before. So any questions? Roth or for Mr. Anderson? Yes. Um, we've spoken about by doing this, we wouldn't be able to, was it we couldn't refund this in the future? Or is, is that addressed in this at all? Or am I remembering correctly? The the one that we, we talked about that we would not be able to refund again was when we talked about the MBA bond on the building that with Chase Bank possibly, they wouldn't, it would not be callable. I believe, uh, and Mark can correct me if I'm wrong, but these, these bonds would still be callable at any time. If I may just jump in. At this point in time, uh, Zions Bank is anticipating being a purchaser of these bonds. I'm working with Brock to get enough information to submit a credit package. Uh, Zions, if they are the purchaser, would allow the bonds to be called at any time in the future if the city found a more advantageous rate or wanted to pay them off faster. Um, this resolution also uh, delegates authority to the mayor and Brock to determine the method and how the bonds are sold and the mayor and the recorder to execute the bonds as long as they're within the parameters approved by the council. Because new money is being added to uh, this financing, a public hearing is required, and this proposes a public hearing date of February 10th. Uh, and then we'll notice that appropriately with Bond Council here in the next few weeks. Uh, Brock, these are these unit, it's a uniform bond, so we're not re amortizing the, the payments, right? Yeah, that's what we're looking to do is do them as we discussed before where the current ones will stay on their current schedule. What, what occurs is we basically add three years to the uh, term for the new money, but the payment schedule for the 2012 and 17 bonds remain the same. That's currently proposed. I'm guessing on the 27th, we'll have a, an item to set that public hearing. Is that right? No, and in this, um, I believe, as you say, in the, these parameters, it sets forth for that public hearing to be on February 10th. If we need to do an actual item on our agenda, but it's in this parameters that you're going to adopt that it sets forth for the public hearing to be on that date. Any other questions, Council? So I, I don't quite understand. So are we approving this without the public uh, hearing? Is that, is yes. that why this is on? Yeah, you'll adopt, you'll adopt this parameters resolution, adopting the parameters of what we're going to do. And if the, and adopting this, you also are setting a public hearing for February 10th, I believe. So that's when we'll have the, actually the public hearing for the public to weigh in on whether they are in favor or not of refunding and mainly refunding. it's mainly for the issuance of the new money of bonding for new money if we were just refunding we wouldn't have to have a public hearing to just refund the bonds because of the new money and i will just note that we do need to change the time that's in the the packet it says it's at 6 p.m and i'm guessing we'll have it at 5 p.m that day so we can just make that part of our motion Any other questions, Council? Okay, if not, then I would look for a motion. And if you would, and that motion include changing the 
public hearing start time to 5 p.m. on February 10th, 2021. Mayor, I move that we approve the parameters resolution 2020-03 with the only change of the public hearing on February 10th being changed from 6 p.m. to 5 p.m. I second it. A motion by Jarrett and a second by Denny to approve the parameters resolution. Um, and as presented and setting the public hearing date to begin at 5 p.m. instead of 6 as it's written. Any question on that motion, Council? Again, a money item, roll call. Ben? Aye. Lena? Aye. Jarrett? Aye. Denny? Aye. Wendell? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Appreciate Thank your you for allowing me to participate. You're welcome to stay. We may have some great things come up in reports. <laughs> okay. Mayor and council report. I think Jenny, you seconded, right? You seconded that one, right? I did. Jenny seconded. Jarrett made the motion and Jenny seconded. Okay, Mayor and Council reports, Ben. Quiet night for me, Mayor, and I have none. Slow start to 2021. <laughs> okay, Lena. I also have no reports this, so far this month. Ooh, Jared. I told my wife this is gonna be a long meeting. This is not <laughs> what I expected. So I'll make up for them. Um, I just have a couple <laughs> quick things. Um, we had a CEC meeting this week, uh, that community education channel. And um, we had a, a reporter that mostly focuses on the cities, um, just kind of unhappy with how she's been treated in the community with not having media credentials. And she tried to go like to the inauguration and got turned away. And anyways, so we had a really good discussion and I've kind of redefined her role as just a straight up community reporter instead of like a news reporter or something like that. Um, but with that, she expressed that she has to hunt down stories and it's pretty hard. And so I actually gave her Christelle's name. We decided that everyone that does the newsletter for the city should be in contact with her because that's the person that really knows kind of what's going on in all the different departments, and might be able to feed her a story. So evidently she's gonna call the different cities um, just like once a month and just see if there's something to like covered. I think that, 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 that thought that was a really good idea. Um, and then we are still considering rebranding the CEC. Um, we're kind of starting that process. I'm not sure what we'll call it, but we think that could really help with even her going out. And if it's a recognized name, she might not get funny looks from people when she's trying to get a story. Um, and then also we had a mosquito abatement meeting. And the one thing I'll report with the mosquito abatement district is they are very efficient. Um, Every year they've been able to put away 80 or $90,000 because they know they'll need a bigger building in the future. And it kind of just reminds me of like the county with being able to build their, their new building without borrowing money. That's the same position that the Mosquito Bay district, district will be in. And, you know, they could have raised their wages a lot or they could have done lots of things to spend that money, but they've been very prudent uh, so that they can have savings and not have to borrow when the time comes. So. The district has been run really well, and that's all I have to report. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Jer, Council? The mosquito abatement crews are getting trained on willow cuttings and restoration right now, so we may have another team we can use for, for that type of work, too. And they've been good, good helping us as we go through the Flood Control Authority projects giving us some input so we don't build something that becomes an immediate mosquito breeding area and more maintenance for them. So I appreciate their help and pass that along to Sean and that group. Danny? Nothing. Wendell? Nothing. Holy smokes. You get you guys out in public. You got to get out of your yard once in a while. <laughs> I don't have a heck of a lot. There was a, a mayor's meet Weekly, we got our update from the health department um, and the hospital. Um, dire conditions at the hospital. They had six deaths in a 24-hour period on Monday. 
over there uh, the stress that it's causing on the nurses and the doctors you can see it when you when you talk to them um, and no let up in sight focus on the health department is going to vaccines um, they get 1400 doses a week they're over scheduled right now um, chief did you get your people vaccinated and can't see your rank. Is it Lieutenant, Sergeant, Lieutenant Colonel? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tell him I just gave you a promotion. There's two stars on your shoulder from now on. Um, Dr. Blodgett did indicate that if we feel like we have other staff that we consider first responders, um, in addition to fire and police, um, that we can um, sign up on the website. Um, there's been some cities that have asked about some of their, their front desk staff that are in contact with a lot of uh, people coming in the door, trying to get them vaccinated. Um, he said that's possible. We just need to to get them signed up over there. So just kind of make you aware of that. Um, vaccinations are going, are going okay in the schools. About 50% are okay getting vaccinated. 25% uh, said adamantly no, they're not. And the other 25% can't decide. Um, classes are continuing with, uh, with masks and they are vigilant with their masks. They've upped the attendance at sporting events to four fans per participant from two now about 80 positive cases among the student body and that's dropping down about three times that many in quarantine um, out of their testing the test to play they're seeing about a three percent positivity rate in the testing of the athletes before they can participate and they should have started the k-12 student testing today i haven't heard if they did or not that was supposed to be over today similar news on dsu on the campus um, we got 20 cases in amongst the student body right now. They're following the same protocols as last fall. Uh, limited spectator sports, but that'll be ramping up. The record of decision was due today on the Northern Corridor. Um, I have not heard. If anybody heard if that came out on the corridor yet, it was supposed to come out today. Um, unemployment claims are, are lower than they were a year ago. About 450 lower than they were a year ago today. So they're doing pretty good with employment. Um, Mr. Almquist did indicate that, and you guys have probably noticed on I-15, the garbage along the highways is getting nasty. Um, they've lost the ability to use the inmates and UDOT's lost their budget cuts. Um, so they, they are of limited assistance there as well. The county has decided to provide a, a truck and trailer and um, Solid Waste District will provide the labor and they're gonna use a lend a hand volunteer program to help out on some of the side streets, the county and the, and the district will be working on the I-15 corridor. But they have requested if we have volunteer groups from within the city that could maybe help out on some of the other corridors um, like Santa Clara Drive or Sunset Boulevard, other areas that may become an issue. Um, they've talked about SR9 over to Hurricane and some of those that are, that are, I haven't seen a lot of it in Santa Clara yet, but if we do notice some of that, uh, we could um, maybe set up a, a volunteer committee or, or go to some of the some of the churches and see if we can seek some volunteers to kind of help clean that up for the schools, those types of things. So kind of keep your, your eyes open. They are looking for partnerships with communities to help keep the the roadways clean, but they do have that tra truck and trailer available. If we decide we want to do a cleanup day, they can provide that to help assist. And so, Brad, as you're looking in your parks and maybe out in the South Hills, if we need some assistance that way, they will come to our aid on that. So, so we know. Okay. Um, Jack, what else? Uh, I just wanted to let the council know that we did have our um, review of our 
engineers. We had nine of them that uh, put in for our pooling. And uh, I asked Jerry Amundsen where um, he, he didn't put his uh, engineering firm didn't put in to sit on our committee. There was me and, and Corey and Brad and Jerry. And uh, we reviewed them and, and we scored them. And so we came up with these. This is how we scored them. Um, as you look at the paper, you should have it on your desk. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll take the top five um, we're going to call them and have them bring their, uh, their lead uh, person come in. And, and then the person that's going to actually work with our city as we review plans, um, whatever it might be for the engineering duties of the city, we'll interview them and, and then uh, we'll make a decision on the, on the uh, city engineer. But those will be our five that we'll pull with. And then we'll, we, we just need to review and see who we're going to pick for our pooling engineer or for our main engineer. And it could, could be Bowens and Collins. I mean, when we get done, it could be the same, same company, but we're going we're gonna to review all of them and interview them. And uh, we're also going to look at cost. We're going to see who the person is they're going to send over to do plan reviews and to come to our TRC meetings. And we got, we want to know what that cost is going to be hourly cost. Okay. Questions for Jack. Just uh, one other thing on when we start this water line, um, the road going up to the water tank will be closed during the week when they're, when they're digging. And then that road will be open back up on the, on the weekends. So if you get any complaints, um, you know, that's, that's what will be happening. So will it be completely blocked off to where ATVs won't even have access around the construction? Zone? There's other ways that they can get around there, um, but they wouldn't be able to probably go up that road. I don't, you know, we don't want them to go, think that they can go up there and then start making new trails off and breaking down our turtle fence and everything else. So, yeah. Probably wouldn't hurt to do a, some type of an announcement, Christelle, get it on the web page and put it on social media about the closures. And if we can, I don't know if we can have some exhibits or some information on the times when it's going to be closed that we can get out to the public because that's such a high use area. And then you'll probably need some enforcement leverage if you're going to make it work and keep them off the undisturbed area. You may need some, some help with that. Yeah. Can the, other, that. the other thing we may want to do is contact Patrick, that area at the bottom of the hill that they use for parking now, and then they ride their bikes up in there. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to become more busier during the day as they're limited from going out past that area. So you may want to contact him and just kind of give him a heads up and make sure it's okay with him we use it. Okay. That's, that's all I have. Any idea how long it will take? For the construction? Um, they're going to start on the section over here um, from the edge development out because we've got to get away from the reserve um, before the turtle habitat gets going again. They, the turtles start moving. And then they'll put the turtle fence and stuff um, over here going up to the tank. And it, it just depends on uh, it, where we get to. Uh, it just depends. I don't know how long it's going to take. It could go into September. Have they got, what's their time for completion, Jack? Um, I don't have it with me, but it, it, it's left open. It's, it's, it's left open, so they could, I think it goes into September, October. Um, we did that for this purpose of, you know, making sure that our bid stayed down. You know, we didn't want to put too much pressure on them with the portus and things that we've got to deal with up there. But I can get that for you. I can get a, a schedule. Yeah, just that that'd be helpful to get to Chris Dale that could we could put in that literature, uh, uh, the length of the construction, anticipated time of the construction. And then as we go through, we can update it and let them know how things are going. Okay, anything else, Jack? No, nope, that's it, unless you have any questions for me. Questions, Council? Brad or Corey, Bob, do you guys have anything tonight? Chief? 
Seven words or less. <laughs> Just real quick, you may or may not be aware that we responded to a fire over at the Memorial Park bathroom the other night. Um, so some damage was done and I know uh, Brad was looking at the cost of that, but yeah, unfortunately our brand new bathroom, we had to respond to a fire in there, did some damage and you know, it could have been worse. Um, but fortunately, is what it is and we got it taken care of. So. When's the cameras going to be operational? Um, Brad's working with Info West uh, on them on getting uh, internet access that we need in those spots. Some of them are going to start going that we already have access already. And like at Goobler Park where that's already already been set up because previous camera results are going to start happening. And he, he works, and Brad can probably fill in more on where they're at with Info West and the other side of that. So, thanks. That that particular park, because of the location, it sits down in a low spot. Um, Info West is going to come out and do a site survey. I know we can't put it on the in the bathroom like we thought, so we may end up putting it on the pavilion so we can see the south the tower where the dish is. We don't we ordered uh, cameras for Google Park, Canyon View Park, Little League Park, because we already have internet service there. And then we'll add the uh, splash pad and the uh, maintenance building area where the pickleball courts are later. I'm working with uh, Brian Bowler right now to try to figure out how, where we can put the cameras and where we can get internet. Um, also, a couple other locations like Black Rock and stuff we're adding in. But we wanted to get the bandwidth for the internet info west worked out before we you know get any farther into the process <clears throat> i know jared asked in the text stream do, do those get locked at night yeah. bathrooms through the city <clears throat> we have we do not have the cipher or the combination locks on those bathrooms yet because we have them at canyon view and we've been having problems with them locking at night only one out of the four bathrooms locks like it's supposed to so we've scheduled the locksmith to come out and do some training for our people and see if it's a lot problem with the locks or the, the people programming it. And they're supposed to come out tomorrow. And if we figure out the problem we're having with the locks, then we'll, we'll go ahead and add those two on there. But I didn't want to put them on there until we, you know, made sure that those locks work or find something else that's better that, you know, works, works and locks like it's supposed to. Questions for Bradley? I really do wonder if it'd be in our interest to buy a couple cameras we could just put up wherever they're trying on batteries just to get spot check a couple areas that may have trouble then. They're not that expensive. It might be a good investment for the parks department. Yeah, I agree. Jack mentioned that yesterday. I just, the damage, I got an estimate for the damage today and, and I'm working with uh, Chris with Travelers Insurance with the damage for that bathroom was $6,855 through North Star, that's what their bid was to fix it. Is, is there any way to track down who it was? I, I mean, I, with no cameras in a residential area, I'm guessing no, but. How's the investigation going, Lieutenant Colonel Briggs? <laughs> this is your chance to keep the bars or lose them right here, buddy. Come on up to the mic. <laughs> He's gonna rescind your promotion. <laughs> Uh, we did have a promising one uh, at Canyon View Park. We had quite a bit of evidence and some receipts, and we were even taking receipts and going to Harmon's and trying to pull video footage during that time frame to find out who was making purchases of things at Harmon's, and we just had nothing pan out. Um, we, we've had a kid that we suspect of it, but there's just no way to tie any evidence to it, and we've been trying to do interviews with them and the, parents are really cooperative with this young man but he's just one of these kids that is defiant and won't come around to admitting anything and we just don't have any evidence to prove that it's him now we know that it's a problem and we've been telling our officers to spend time at the parks Ivan City wasn't having problems because we kept asking them about it and then just recently they've been having problems with their parks as well too so and I know that St. George had some big cases in their parks where they had, you know, they were coming in busting up toilets and sinks and the whole whole gambit. And 
it was quite a bit of damage. And I think St. George ended up getting some kids on that one. But I don't know what it is. It just seems to be a growing trend with these parks and the damage. And so Sergeant Hallman is uh, our night shift sergeant right now. And him and his guys are doing extra patrol. In fact, he was the one that responded on the fire at the new bathroom down there. So we're doing what we can, but really it's just, the problem is it's just hit and miss. And if they're doing this at night and they're doing it under the cover of darkness, they can kind of see and hear you coming from a mile away. Well, keep us in the loop on that. Thank you. Appreciate your good work. Could I finish while I'm up here? You can keep, yeah, go ahead. You got more stuff? <laughs> so just a couple things to make you guys aware of. Um, We've been down an officer for a while with, uh, oh, I believe it was Officer Shumway was off for some pregnancy leave and then she ended up leaving and we finally filled her spot and a selection was made and a conditional offer for Jake Adams. Uh, Jake Adams does have some prior history with Salt Lake, or not Salt Lake County, uh, Washington County and he was the undersheriff there for a period of time. Um, but he came in and interviewed. He was, he's kind of a, a good pickup for several agencies. You know, a lot of people were looking at him, but he had no interest anywhere else. He really appreciates Chief Flowers and, and our department and the way we operate. And he wanted to come here. So that'll be good for us. A lot of experience. He has a polygraph and a background and, and conducts polygraph tests and things like that. So he'll be a good pickup for our agency. And hopefully it won't take a lot of time to get him up to speed to where he can uh, function as a normal police officer. We just don't have that new guy lag time that we run into. Uh, hitting another hiccup in the road until Jake can come on full time, which he'll start periodically around the 25th of January. Uh, we just were informed today that Officer Jesse Hall has been called up and he's up in Camp Williams it's on standby because uh, they're looking at doing a deployment out to DC for the protests and a lot of the problems are happening back there so and he's a he's a member of the triple dudes so I don't know if that affects anyone else in the city or if you're aware but um, that's what's going on with uh, Jesse Hall so we're going to be down another guy so we're trying to scramble and and move some guys around to make sure we try and have some adequate coverage for our shifts. And then on the COVID stuff, we, we did get approval for the crossing guards because that was a concern because they have so much contact with the kids and they gave us the thumbs up that they would be falling under the first responder list. And so they gave us the okay because a lot of our crossing guards too fall in the age range of the demographic where they're considered at risk you know, and given their assignment. So they went ahead and said that, yeah, they can come in and get those uh, vaccinations. So um, outside of that, I think other than the parks and trying to deal with that, it's been relatively quiet for the most part. So any questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anybody else? I have a couple. You got a couple? I got a couple. Uh, first one need to want to talk to council about is our budget retreat, our annual budget retreat and a, a date that council is available. Everyone to come and meet, discuss the fiscal year 22 budget. So previously we usually we've met around the end of February when we've met. So, um, and it's been on a Thursday. Previously, that would the last Thursday of February is February 25th. Or we could look at like February 18th, which is the third week, or we wouldn't have a back to back with city council. Wondering a date that maybe works with city council. It doesn't have to be Thursday, it can be any day. But. Council, do you have a preference? If we did the 25th, I just have to be done at like three. I do like the 18th as well. Checking my schedule, either the 17th or the 25th will work. <laughs> I think I fall into that category too. 17th or 25th? Whatever. <laughs> he doesn't have any idea. <laughs> Is that 
when they look at their calendar. Did Danny look at his calendar and he just looks for dots for the whole year. He's like, oh, I've got Take a day, any day. I've got two on there for this year. <laughs> I, I'm good with either of those. The 25th is better, but I can make the 18th work. And then I think your shows are just great. More importantly, can we discuss the menu or? The venue? The menu. Menu. I mean, oh, of course. <laughs> it's a retreat. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mayor? The 25th would be better for me, but I can do either. We go for the 25th, and I know previously we started at noon, maybe with Jarrett having to maybe get a week and start maybe a hair earlier, and he has to leave a little bit earlier than, than if we're not complete, but we can maybe start, take off at 10 30 or 11 and have lunch brought in around noon okay. at work and we yeah. will uh we'll decide on the uh, eating and get the menu out also uh we'll bring back on the 27th the budget calendar for for approval from council on those dates um so brock what time is it on the 25th then 10 uh i was gonna say 10 30 or 11 is there a Time that uh, you want to get going earlier, 10, 10 30. What would you prefer? 10 30. 10 30. And food comes faster. Okay. All right. Um, other thing we, part of our uh, COVID funds that we see, we ordered some masks for staff. If you want to, tonight when you leave, you. Head over towards Sherry Lair's office. There's a box of masks that we purchased for city. It has a city logo, tree, says city of Santa Clara, or just says Santa Clara. Uh, we've ordered the bunch for staff, everybody. We've also ordered a bunch of youth sizes that we're going to take to the elementary schools and pass out to the elementary school and Lava Ridge. So pass out some masks and have them out. So if you'd like to stop by, stop through by there and grab some. We'll probably order some more. Uh, now that we see the sizes, we might have to order some some others to get sizes that, that fit. So but anyway, they're, they're there for you to, to grab. Uh, the last thing I have was LPC was yesterday. A uh, couple of the, I'll, the main ones that I uh, probably hit to Santa Clara is started it's on housing eight, house bill 82. This is about ADUs and uh, the ward, I think Representative Ward that's running this one. And in it, they were going to, he will make ADUs a permitted use, no longer a conditional use. And cities cannot establish any requirement or restrictions to that, to the size, lot size parking, street frontage, or anything like that on the ADU. So, and it could also prohibit some HOAs from outlying ADUs. So on the on it, they did some uh, they did some polling, and I mean it's overwhelming uh, of opposition from the league of, on this that of taking away any restriction, any type of requirements on these ADUs that somebody could create that and have have to have no additional parking to accommodate that. So um, that's one a big concern also in. A little bit inside of housing is House Bill uh, 98. This one talks about building inspections. This is one where they're talking that the applicant uh, who pulls a building permit could opt out of having city inspections and they would be able to get their own licensed inspector to do inspections who also, that person also would give the CO on the home. They can opt out of plan review with the city. So and also says that the city cannot and that would not be able to adopt any building design standards. So they're pushing back on that one too, right? Yeah, and that one as well. So um, that's another big one. Um, the, the other one, I guess a little bit that is, is on referendums, House Bill 23, which just states that if somebody wanted to do a referendum that didn't meet the April 15th deadline, there is uh, a way they can still get on the, the, uh, ballot for November if they didn't meet the uh, April 15th deadline that there's some provisions that they're going to allow to let them get on 
the ballot. So those were the the big ones that they hit. They talked a little bit, not uh, kind of a little bit with House Bill 82, but just talked in housing. Dev. They did discuss this, the cost of housing going up in their part of what the House Bill 82 is. They're saying that the cities are driving the cost and delayed inspections are what are part of the problem in driving cost of housing. So that's the who's pushing the bill. That's what they're saying. So or maybe it's just no inventory. Yeah, per se. <laughs> they're, they're delayed inspections and they think they're gonna go to a private consultant right now and get him out there any faster. That's crazy. Their inventory is down to less than 30 days. So those. Um, Anything else, Brock? Nope, those are, those are things that I had to share with you tonight. Thank you. What's up down south is tomorrow, the economic summit. Who's registered? It's all virtual. So us three. Awesome. That is tomorrow. It is virtual, so you can. You got a good enough iPad. You could watch it on the golf. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Anybody? Or he's going to say something. Well, just to comment on what Brock said, the Utah chapter of building inspectors are aware of these bills coming in. So is the building officials chapter of Utah. And they have uh, lobbyists that will speak their support of denial of these uh, requests. I think it's a uh, a lot of lobbying from some of the people that are on the legislature that are in the building background that think that we're going to have safer buildings by not having inspections or, or making it faster. I don't know if that's true. My opinion, no. Okay. Chapters are working to support the League of Towns and, and getting these bills denied. Thanks, Corey. All righty, we don't need executive session, right? I just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Got a motion, do I have a second? second. Motion by Danny, second by Wendell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you.